Hello, another week, another maintenance blog, and this week it's all about house batteries. We inherited our house battery setup with the boat, and it is eight 90 amp hours, 12 volt batteries. Now in the AML Super Maramus, it's set up on a 24 volt system, which means that the batteries are set up in blocks of 24 volts, which means two batteries are wired together in series, which basically means running a cable from the negative to the positive between two batteries, giving us a 24 volt block. So with a 24 volt setup, we've doubled the volts and then we half the amps. So now we have a battery bank of 360 amp hours at 24 volts. Now these 24 volt blocks are then wired in parallel to supply a 24 volt current. So the, the wiring itself was extremely messy and the batteries were at the end of their natural life anyway. So it was time for an upgrade and a tidy up. We've got the solar's ready. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. We do have AC sockets on the boat, but they only run off shore power or the generator. And what I really wanted to do was do things more off grid, uh, not use the generator as much and be able to rely more on the solar. We do have an inverter on board, a 24 to 230 volt inverter. The only problem is it's only 600 watt and it only has three outlets, none of which run to the galley or the saloon area, which is where you really need to use that DC power. Uh, at 600 watts, it doesn't run things like toasters, kettles, microwaves, vacuum cleaners, or anything like that. So it was definitely time for an upgrade of that as well. But of course, what looks good on paper always rubs up against the harsh reality of boat design. We spent about two hours trying to swap these batteries out um, and we, we put them in the same way they came out, thinking the batteries were more or less the same dimension. But what we didn't realise is that they are slightly bigger and the terminals in these designs are closer together. So we've got maybe two centimetres between the terminals here, which is not brilliant because if the boat starts shaking about and those ter terminals arc, then we've got a potential of fire. The other thing was because of the slight difference in dimensions and the fact that the terminals are in a different place, we found that some of the cables were running over the terminals and this this bit here, this reinforcing bar here for the, for the bed was forcing the cables down onto the terminals, which obviously is not a, a good idea, especially if the, the batteries start moving and those, the insulation of the cables start uh, rubbing on the terminals. So the whole thing needs to be rethought. We're gonna reorientate the batteries this way um, and then we're going to get some extra cables cut, which is more expensive, more time, but ultimately safer. This cabling, the battery cabling, is about 15 euros a meter. The other thing yesterday was we managed to break off the, the shunt here. So that's going to have to be replaced. And I think we're going to try and move it to this end because the battery bank has actually got a slight slope going this direction. So we've got a bit more head clearance here than we have at that end. But other than that, it's a good battery box. It's, it's all kind of sealed. Um, there's a big vent down here. To the outside which uh, if there is any hydrogen gas coming off the batteries then uh, then there's a good vent out there. So we swapped out the 90 amp hour batteries for 110 amp hours which would normally give us 880 amp hours at 12 volts but obviously we've doubled the volts and so we half the amps which gives us a battery bank now of 440 amp hours. So we reorientated the batteries uh, which made it easier to to rig up that 24 volt system. So these 24 volt blocks are then wired in parallel uh, using equal length cables to the positive terminal and the negative shunt. We haven't got any positive and negatives butting up against each other now, which is good, um, with the exception of there, but we can put a quite a big gap, some padding in there. Well, the suspensor just finishing up and tightening up. We've got a nice neat... Three weeks tightening. later. <laughs> yeah. So I'll switch the battery charger off for the day just to see how we get on. I just want to check the settings because the settings should technically be the same for gel and AGM but I just want to double check that I've done that. The switches for the settings are way under there there's no way of seeing them and you're gonna to got to feel your way around and the only way to actually know what settings are on is to try and get a camera under there and do them. You no, have no idea how you change them around because you can't see them and you can barely feel them. So gel and AGM are on the same switch so that's already set to the right settings. Number one is on and the rest are off by the looks of it, which is what it is set to. So we have to do that. Okay, next day and we finished fairly late last night, so I didn't get a chance to kind of conclude the whole battery changeover thing. But uh, we have now got 910 amp Victron AGM batteries. Um, it's not strictly necessary to have one for the engine battery, but I wanted to have the extra just in case we had to swap one out at any one time. We've got the positive terminal there and we've got the shunt, the negative shunt here. And yeah, it's so much neater and we can close the lid easier. 
Um, there's still a few gaps around which I'm going to start packing out with some some foam noodle just to give it some cushioning and to make sure it doesn't rattle about. We've got the solar panels as well. We've got all those um, uh, plugged in yesterday as well and tested and tried with the batteries and everything just went like clockwork. Um, it might have helped that we've got a Victron battery monitor, Victron controller and Victron batteries so there's no uh, compatibility issues. Uh, the solar is Panasonic um, which have got a fantastic reputation. So all in all it has been a very expensive week. It is something we budgeted for. Um, we did shop around a hell of a lot. So all in all for the nine Victrons we paid 2,700 euros. Um, for the solar arch we paid 1,500 euros which was very very cheap. Um, the solar panels and the controller was about 1,200 euros um, plus a lot of peripheries as well. Um, I think we paid 71 euros for the bits and pieces, some extra cabling for the for the battery uh, for the battery box. But we're fully uh, self-sufficient now in energy. We shouldn't have to worry about plugging in anymore. We shouldn't have to worry about the generator not charging the batteries because um, our generator is very old and we've had a lot of problems with it this year. So all that remains to do now is pack the batteries so they don't rattle about. I'm going to sort out the, the Victron solid controller and then I think we're all set up and I can move on to the next job. Two things to mark off and only another three pages to go. So that was the battery swapped out. So next was the inverter upgrade. Uh, in the end we decided to keep the small inverter and add an additional one. So the cable run from the battery bank to the engine bay is as difficult as they come. But by a sheer stroke of luck there was a redundant transformer, a 24 volt to a 32 volt uh, transformer in the engine bay. Um, it was still wired up to the batteries but it wasn't going anywhere. Why the previous owner wanted a 32 volt transformer in the first place I have no idea. I don't know what, it, what, what runs on 32 volts but it did mean that we had cables in place going to terminals inside the engine bay. So it meant I could remove that old 32 volt transformer and use the cables and the space to put the new Victron one in. So as with most things on the 230 volt side of things, I prefer to get a qualified electrician in just to make sure everything is done absolutely right. And uh, just so happened we were in Almiramar at the time, so I got Spencer from uh, the local chandry, Alamar Marine, to come in to remove that inverter and put the cables in place for the new one. I've just picked this up from the uh, local chandlery. It's a Victron Energy Phoenix inverter, it's 3000 watts. Um, and this is part of our quest to become more self-sufficient when we're an anchor. We want to use this um, to help us convert more of that solar energy to energy on the boat. The money for this was gifted to us, so I'd just like to thank that person. Uh, you know who you are, thank you very much. This is something we've been after for a very long time. Um, and we've got four days before we leave this place to install it. Um, engine bays aren't the best places to put inverters, but it was the only place we could really find it because, as you can see, it's quite a, a bulky item. But it will mean that we can run the halogen oven, the induction hob, the washing machine, um, and a, a toaster, microwave, things like that. All, obviously not all at the same time, but it will give, give us that option when we're at anchor because we're hoping to spend a lot more time at anchor in the future, not just because it saves on marina fees, but also because uh, further lockdowns due to the coronavirus. So I'm just putting together this backing plate for the inverter. The insulation in the engine room is about an inch or an inch and a half thick. Um, so I've got to cut a section out and put this backing plate on and make sure it's tightly secured to the bulkhead. And then I can mount the bracket on here um, and hang the inverter on because it's quite, quite heavy, the inverter. So it needs a solid foundation. It should hold it with some Gorilla Glue and uh, yeah. massive bolts. This is the patch where the old uh, inverter was. I've already drawn the template for the, uh, for the wooden mount that I'm making. And I'm going to cut that out and then I'm going to stick this here and then mount the backing plate onto this. So to line these holes up with that, uh, this is a little trick for my uh, furniture designing days. Just make the screws stick out slightly at the back. Put a bit of marker on it. Sorry about the noise, it's the uh, bilge pump. Make sure you get it lined up. So I'm going to write up on the top of that. And then line it up. The marks roll on here, so I'm just going to reinforce those. So I'm just going to temporarily attach the backing plate in place 
um, and then try it on and if it works I'm going to put some more substantial bolts through there. These are the holes in the corner that I've got to get the screws in so they're almost accessible. And check this out, not the neatest sicker flexing job I've ever seen. The rest of it looks quite neat. I put the holes in where the screw holes are going to go in from the inverter and they're right on the edge and I'm not happy with them being there at all. And also there's not much clearance down here. So I'm just going to edge it up by about a centimetre so it'll I mean we've got more purchase on that backing plate and we have a bit more clearance under here to get the cables in. I have my old trusty Gorilla Glue to uh, just give it some extra reinforcing nicely onto the bulkhead. I'll just put my spacer in there so I can make a little bit of an adjustment. You can see I've had to move these bolts slightly because when I mounted it the screws from the actual housing went straight into the washer. So I've had to shift them along a little bit to leave space for those mounting screws to go on. Solid. There's a bit more clearance down the bottom here. Although I'm going to put some spaces behind there just to pull that free a bit so we can get into these terminals here. So now I've got the bracket on, I'm just going to put these extra mounting screws in. There's four, one in each corner, which is why I adjust the, the bolts before. rock solid. And as I was saying before there's this pipe in the way for these terminals so I'm just going to put a spacer and just pull that out a little bit to clear that pipe. I cut these out of plywood, they're just kind of uh, two plywood washers really and um, these are the spacers that were on before so that kind of fits through the insulation so it makes the uh, inverter stand proud of the insulation but I think we need just a little bit more help here to still leverage it away because this is bigger than the old inverter. The old inverter kind of sat quite high and you could fit the terminals in there but you can't do that with this. I'm just going to maneuver these in place. So I've got these slightly longer screws to go down here which go through the plastic tubing, through the plywood washer. Just leave that free so I can get the other one in first. Tighten this one up. Uh, it's rock solid. <sighs> Put these screws back in place. These are the wires from the old one. Uh, it was strange because there was two wires feeding in when only one was needed. But I think they used the slightly smaller gauge to get round the corners. Maybe I don't know. But as simple as the wiring is for the inverter, I still wanted to get Spencer back to make sure it was done absolutely right and the fact that he had a man-sized crimpers for the terminal ends. The next thing was to add a 40 amp circuit breaker. So this is the RCD and circuit breaker for the inverter. So I'm going to bring the line from the inverter to the top, bring out the bottom and then I'm going to separate the earth and somehow connect that on the outside because there's no room inside the box to do it. So it's a bit fiddly um, and also it's behind this the chain for the autopilot as well. So I, I just tinned the ends of those cables to give it a nice firm connection inside the RCD. So I fitted two outlets to the inverter, one in the saloon area and one in the galley. So I wanted to make the outlets between the AC and the DC 
uh, very distinctive because they didn't want anybody plugging into what they believed was AC when it was actually DC and running the batteries absolutely flat. So I've got blue ones for the DC and I've got brown ones for the AC. As we were doing a bit of a saloon refit, I was kind of reshaping the, the sofa a little bit. I decided to move some of those AC outlets as well, which meant they were more easily accessible. So what I'm going to try and do is reroute them so we can access them without having to take any backing boards or seat up. Um, so I'm going to basically put it under here, which is where the, the old grill was for um, an aircon unit, which we haven't got. I don't know whether the previous owner maybe took it out. I'm going to reroute the 230 volt sockets and then I'm going to make room for the inverter sockets um, so we can switch between the two for the washing machine and also access one of the spare sockets um, which has been made redundant um, and I'm going to reroute it here and make it live again. I've got three junction boxes behind here now, uh, one's for the washing machine, one's for the 230 volt AC and one's for the inverter which I'm just wiring up now and the plug's going to go down there and then that will be used for the washing machine and the computers when we're working at the table. So at the moment, we've got to take a long extension cable from the nav station all the way to the saloon table um, of the smaller inverter. This will be the final stage of putting it all together. And here you can see where I made a, a bit of a backing box to protect the backs of those outlets. We've got the app, the Victron Connect app, and I wouldn't have been able to do this on the other um, inverter, but this is on the 3000 watt inverter. So I'm just going to watch what it does under the app. So that's shot up to sort of 1300 watts. Because we've got full solar today, that's not a problem. So I can't believe it's nearly three years since uh, we did that upgrade and now we're on the other side of the Atlantic and it's been absolutely great. We've been living off anchor most of that time and using the solar and the inverter to make toast, to boil the kettle and even the induction hob and the microwave. So it's all possible to use that now through our Victron inverter. We only put the generator on occasionally when we have bad weather. If I was to do the job again, if anything, I'd probably fit more outlets, um, but uh, a, a multi-adapter extension does the job just as well. thinking that we, they had uh, endless uh, and it just so happened no 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 I wanted to just so I thought yeah. so thanks for watching and a special thank you to our patrons who keep us going through good times and bad if you found this blog useful and you're the type of person who likes to return a favor then you can buy me a beer by following the links to PayPal or Patreon in the description below and now you can also buy one of our crew shirts by following the links to our merch store. 